Today we're going to show you how to replace an FPC connector. There's connector problems in lots of iPhone logic boards and we are going to walk you through our approach how to get these things changed so that you can get your phone back to life. So this is an iPhone 7 and we're going to replace the LCD connector. So let's take a look under the microscope to get started. We'll show the microscope cam and let's look at the connector that we're going to replace. So this one is not salvageable. You can see some bad pins here at the side. There's a lot of uh, connector mash down here on this end. So there's no way we can really rejuvenate this connector. It's too far gone, so we're going to have to replace it. So let's start by taking the old connector off and I've got the board installed here in our fine fix board holder which we absolutely love. We have one for every iPhone available on iPad Rehab Supply so you can head over to iPad Rehab Supply if you need to pick up a board holder. This is our favorite one. All right, we are going to use some hot air and you are going to have to figure out which setting on your hot air station is the right one through practice. So you're going to look at how the flux behaves, you're going to listen to the sound, and you're going to figure out what's the right temperature for your setup. My setup will change. In fact, I'm 10 degrees higher than I was a month ago um, just because I've had to adjust as the heating element ages, as the shape of the nozzle changes. So I'm going to put some heat and the key to not pulling pads is making sure that I have movement on every pin before I attempt to take the connector off. I've already cleared away the gasket, the little gasket sticker that lives on this. There's a sticker on this chip that I don't really care about. So we're going to put some heat on here and look for a color change from matte too shiny. I'm going to add a little bit more flux here on the end. I can see that the pins are shiny and there we go. Now my anchor bracket is shiny so I can test. I have movement so I'm going to pull that connector away and when I do that I turn the hot air away from the connector. Let's go ahead and take the pads and get them cleaned up and ready for installing a new connector. So the solder that's on there now is lead-free solder. Lead-free is difficult to work with because it requires a higher melting temperature than leaded solder. So I'm going to have a better time if I replace the lead-free solder with standard 6337 leaded solder. And we use Kester brand leaded solder. So I'm going to put some more flux on that and then with a large iron that has some serious thermal mass I'm just going to go over these connector pads. Okay, now it's your choice whether or not you want to braid these pads or not. You could, you, there's nothing wrong with braiding as long as you have a good reason, a good argument. So you could make the argument here, I'd like to braid these pads because I would really like for the connector, the new connector to go on fully lead, leaded solder pads, not a mix that we have right now of the lead free and leaded solder. So let me see if I can dig up some, some braid around here. Now if this is a micro BGA chip, I would absolutely not braid it because there's no advantage. You don't, you're, there's too much risk of pulling a pad and you're just going to create kind of dry cobblestone pads and those really don't take a new chip as well as tinned pads. So I would not braid this if this was a micro BGA chip, but since it's a connector, I will. I'm going to rotate this around. Well, there's lots of different brands of, of uh, solder wick or braid that are out there. So you can figure out your favorite brand. We don't use a lot of braid. We only braid s connectors and quite often I go with the choice of, of not braiding the connector. So if you have, uh, you feel that it's a risk or you're afraid you're going to pull a pad, then there's no rule that says you have to braid this connector. You can just skip that step. All right, so let's clean that off.
Now, in or now you can also choose whether or not you want to put the connector on straight onto these flat pads and attach it by tacking down each pad by hand. It will go on really, really flat close to the board. You want the new connector to go on flat close to the board. I'm going to go with the option to tin over these pads to get a little bit of solder on the pads and I'm going to try to use hot air and then come back and do those joints by hand. So let's put some nice fresh solder on these tinned, tin up these pads. And I want them to look like nice puffy pillows. Now they're all very even. And I'm happy with that and ready to go for my new connector. All right, I have my new connector ready and I'm gonna place it on the board I place it on the board using a two tweezer method. So I'm gonna grab the outside of the connector with one set of the tweezers, and I'm gonna use those tweezers to position it, and then I'm gonna use an inside set of tweezers to really seat the connector so that I can have it flat on the board. And I'm gonna to try to get it in the middle, evenly spaced. And then I'm gonna to attempt to tack it down. And I'm going to tack it down where I have plenty of clearance here at the bottom of the connector. So I'm going to touch my tweezers to some solder to make a wet paintbrush. And solder that ground connection right there. All right, so now it's tacked down on one side, but I have plenty of play. Pressing it down into the board, I'm going to tack it down on the other side. Alright, from there I'm going to use hot air to help seat the connector on those pads and then I'll come through and make sure that each joint has enough solder. So let's get some hot air. Now you don't need to worry about melting the connector as long as your hot air is at a reasonable temperature because the heat will flow through the connector into the ground plane. As long as you don't touch the plastic, then it will seat itself just fine. We can touch it here on the anchor and kind of press, press. And it will want, you can move it around and slide it, it will want to line itself up by surface tension. So this, moving the connector helps it to get very flat on the board. Right now it's flat on the board because all of that solder was liquid, but my joints at this point are going to be too weak for a long lasting connection. As we look closely at those joints, they're slightly starved for solder. Although this connector would work, I would be concerned that connect disconnect cycles would rip the connector off the board. So I need to beef up those connections by hand. So I'm going to put some flux. I'm going to get out of my board holder and back into soldering straight on the mat so that I can turn this board to get at an angle. All right, so I'm going to add some flux. And then I'm going to use the mini hot tweezers and I'm going to turn the board a little bit on an angle so that I can really get in there and see those connections. All right, so find an angle that is comfortable for your hand. I'm left handed, so I'm going to turn it a little bit like this. Then we're going to kind of come and apply solder here to sort of tickle each pad and we're taking care not to touch the plastic part of the connector. I'm less concerned about bridging on the components that are adjacent to the connector because I'll be able to come back 
and clear any bridges, but I do want to get enough solder on each foot. Okay, now I'm going to do the same for the solder joints on the other side. I'm going to keep a wet paintbrush. Just need to tickle each joint. All right, after I've applied solder by hand to each joint, I'm going to come back with the hot air to kind of give it a professional finish and reflow all of those joints. All right, now it's time to drop this in ultrasonic to clear the flux out of the connector. You can clear it with some, some alcohol and a, and a Q-tip, but the flux is very sticky and you really want it clean, so ultrasonic is a better choice. Okay, after ultrasonic cleaning, you wanna put the board in some 99% isopropyl alcohol and then take a stiff brush and really scrub out the rest of that flux. I've just done that and we're going to just blow some hot air on the board just to kind of dry away the alcohol so that we can see our connector and test to see whether or not we have any bridging or any cold joints and whether or not we're ready to go. All right, now we can take a look. All right, so let's get close inspection of our joints. We're going to turn the board not just straight up and down here, but we need to look on an angle so that we can really check for ski slope looking joints. We want the joints on the connector to look really similar to a native connector. So here's the native home button connector, and you can see the native factory joints, and you want to compare that to your connector.
and see whether or not they have a very close match with the amount of solder that's on those joints. Some joints are going to be more difficult if they have very, very tight clearance or ground joints, but your goal is to get enough solder on each of them that the pin isn't just sitting on top of the pad. Next, we're going to go down the connector with a pair of tweezers and test for movement. So we're going to just touch each pin pad connection and see whether or not we have any movement. You don't want to have any movement. You're also going to look, do we have any bridging between one connector and its neighbor? So you're going to look for bridging, look for any kind of secondary issues like a bridging on adjacent components. You want to look to see, did you knock anything off? And correct all of that before testing. All right, if you have a, a, a reasonable amount of solder on each joint, and you have no movement and your joint your connector looks pretty similar to a factory connector then it's a job well done how people get into trouble with these i've always i tell students that you have to do three bad connectors before you'll get a good one it's very common to have difficulty finding this right angle you have to get that right angle where you can touch the joint without pressing into and melting the plastic and without coming into contact with the back row of nearby components. And that's a, that's a challenge. Sometimes you'll be able to get that exact angle if you tilt the board up, if you're kind of willing to solder on a bit of an angle. And that's why I do these joints out of the board holder by hand so that I can turn the board to get the exact right angle. You may need to change your tool. If you get to a ground pad, for example, you may, if you're using a very tiny, tiny tool like the micro pencil, it won't have enough thermal mass to heat up and flow a ground joint. So you'll need to use a bigger tool like mini hot tweezers with both tips together. So be aware that different joints may require a different amount of heat in order to flow those joints. With practice, you will be able to do reasonably good, close to factory looking connectors. And that is a staple of your iPhone board repair technician wheelhouse, changing connectors. Everybody needs to work on those. Just practice, and you'll be able to do it. If you're struggling, then sign up for Practical Board Repair School, and we will look at you and watch you soldering in real time and figure out what is that tiny little tip or trick that you need to hear in order to improve your soldering so that you can get these factory results every single time. And that is how iPad Rehab does a basic logic board FPC connector job.